Welcome to the Continuum Lab. If you're new to this channel, then I guess the thumbnail and the title might need a little bit of explanation. When I say that I make so many MIDI controllers, this is what I mean. <laughs> oh, that's so nice. These are my projects from the past year. Uh, I guess 17 full instrument prototype builds or something like that, including a couple of world's firsts, as well as a bunch of smaller projects such as breath sensor and mouthpiece designs, not to forget the one that started the whole thing, the open horn. And all of them have presentations or even full build videos right here on the channel. Let me be very clear here, all of these instruments are prototypes, so some of them are very rough, some of them are a little bit more polished, and I'll talk about that a little bit more later in the video. Anyway, all of them are my own original designs in mechanics, electronics and code. So that's what I mean. I'm not trying to sound pompous here. I just actually genuinely feel like 17 uh, original instruments plus change in one year is quite a lot. Especially for one guy working with basic tools at a desk in his bedroom. But if on the other hand you have been watching these videos then welcome back. Good to see you. Well, I can't see you. Good to have you watching me, that's creepy. Anyway, you, returning viewer, you probably think that you already know what my secret is because I've been teasing this forever. A DIY kit, Continuum Lab Instrument Kit Breakout Boards, or CLICK for short. And obviously the CLICK Breakout Board and the sensor modules are pretty cool and I do use them in almost every single one of my instrument build projects. But the Continuum Lab Instrument Kit is in fact not my secret and this video is not a sales pitch. All of my instruments can be made without the breakout board. You can just uh, plug the electronics and the sensors into the microcontroller directly. Well, not quite directly. You uh, would have to put together some specific electronics depending on the build so that would add some complexity. But most of the interesting stuff is done by the microcontroller itself. So that brings me beautifully to the first substantial part of my secret and the only part of it which is actually technical and that is the microcontroller that I use. And this is it, the Teensy microcontroller. That's the name of the brand, Teensy. I love these boards specifically because of two things. First of all, the MIDI USB connection. The Teensy MIDI USB is no nonsense, no extra electronics, just plug and go. And it has pre-made software functions to make it easy to use. So you can do stuff like send a note on or send pitch bend by literally writing those exact words and it just works without having to worry about weird serial baud rates or writing your own MIDI protocols. And what about that horrible MIDI cable? I'm pretty sure no one's going to miss that. Of course there's much more to making your instrument work than just connecting to the synthesizer, but at least that one aspect of the technical side of things comes pre-solved on a Teensy board and that's the first reason why I like them so much. The other very cool superpower that these Teensy boards have is the onboard one pin capacitive sensor. So by just running a single cable out from the pin to a conductive surface or object, you can turn that surface or object into a touch sensor with a analog-like gradual response that you can then activate with a finger or any other part of your body like lips or feet or whatever. I use these sensors really a lot, like uh, for keys on a wind instrument or a keyboard or positional sliders or even lip position sensors on a mouthpiece. Not all of the Teensy boards have these capacitive capabilities, so look out for that. I've used the Teensy 3.2 really a lot and it's probably my favorite, but lately I've been using the Teensy LC, which is quite a lot cheaper, at around 12 euros and still works just fine for most things, just with uh, less speed and memory. Of course there are other, even cheaper microcontrollers out there, but I still haven't found one which can match the specs of these boards. So if you know of one that can do the things I just mentioned, and is also cheaper than the Teensy LC, then please let me know in the comments, I would love to get one and test it right here on the channel. By the way, I'm not sponsored by the people that make the Teensy boards, but I'm still perfectly happy recommending them because they are awesome. So go check them out at pjrc.com. Use the discount code Continuum Latin. <laughs> I'm just kidding, there's no discount code. I mean, you can tell them that I sent you, but they don't know who I am, so don't do that. Enough about that. So now we're getting closer to the core of my secret, 
And this is where we leave the technical aspects behind and instead start to look at the mindset that I use when I design and build and also when I decide what I'm going to design and build. First of all, and this is something that I've thought about a lot, what is a musical instrument? No, actually, scratch that. Anything you can make noise with could be used as a musical instrument. But what makes for a better instrument? To me, that question translates into what is the playing experience like? And in my mind, a true musical instrument has to tick at least one box in order to earn that title. It has to give the musician creative freedom so that they can select and execute the notes or chords or sounds or samples or whatever with some combination of flexibility and specificity which allows them to express themselves. Because otherwise, what's the point? So there has to be creative freedom. And out of that freedom grows another important aspect of a musical instrument. And that is the level to which practicing the instrument allows you to improve. Now, you can get better at lots of things in life by practicing, of course. But a true musical instrument provides the potential for great growth in expressive power if you practice enough and you overcome the technical and mental difficulties of playing that instrument. And that also means that I am all about the functionality. Because functionality is what provides that expressivity and that playing experience and it provides the potential for growth. It's not the polish that does that or the fancy materials. It's not even your expensive sound card and it's definitely not the fancy RGB blinking lights. And that leads me right into the final thing which to me is the main concept that allows me to be productive while prototyping and that is let's call it my theory of imperfection which basically states that nothing I make will ever be perfect anyway so just stop worrying about it and get on with the making. This is something that I learned the hard way by working my way through more than 20 prototypes of the open horn media system hoping each time that the next one would be perfect. The functionality was basically resolved around the third prototype and then slowly improved up to number 12 or so and that's when everything got sidetracked because I started trying to polish the concept aesthetically. It took me a long time to admit to myself that I just wasn't enjoying that part of the process at all. It turns out that it more or less works, but the result is not exactly perfect. It was frustrating as hell. At the same time, the current open horn prototype started to give me problems. And to be honest, it turns out that that's just not my thing. Like I told you, I'm all about the functionality. So that's when I started making instruments out of cardboard and recycling stuff and hacking everything together. I love it and I'm good at it. I have plenty of ideas, so I just grab one and then I prototype away until I have the functionality that I'm looking for and then I move on to the next thing. Whenever I make something that shows real potential, then I store that away mentally and I start working in my head on ways to make it better. So maybe that one cool idea does deserve a more polished form or more noble materials or 3D printing or epoxy casting or whatever. But I refuse to even think about any of that until the primitive cardboard prototype really works and it does something really cool. <laughs> oh, man. And that's basically the whole story. I take an initial idea which is all about playing experience and functionality and not about aesthetics and blinking lights or whatever. And I combine that idea with a complete disregard for aesthetic considerations. Drumming works just great. <laughs> And that's how I'm able to prototype quickly and make stuff that really works. So most of all, it's really about knowing what it is that you want to do and then doing that. If your talent is making beautiful things, then good for you. You should go and make them. For me, it's the functionality that inspires me. It's the feeling of playing the instrument, not looking at it. I mean, anyone can just walk in from the street and start critiquing my aesthetic choices. And I hate that because I have no counter arguments. I have no real solid criteria for visual beauty. So it just makes me feel insecure. Functionality, on the other hand, now that's hard to question, especially because I've been a musician my whole life and so I'm not afraid to consider myself an authority on how a musical instrument should work. Of course, that doesn't mean that I'm able to play them all equally well. So, I hope you found that useful. The message really is pretty simple. Don't be afraid to be who you are and do what comes naturally to you. That's how you're going to do your most impressive work and that's how you're going to enjoy yourself while doing it. And as a final side note, 
Once I do start selling my Continuum Lab instrument kits, you should definitely go and buy one, because even if it's not the one secret to making great MIDI controllers, it definitely helps. So that's all for today. Take care until next time, and I'll see you in the Continuum.